Hello everyone! Welcome to Different Types of Literature Reviews. In this video, we will briefly define literature reviews and discuss five of the most common literature review types. Simply defined, a literature review is a document that reviews the published literature on a specific topic. I would go a stretch further and say that it's a document or a part of a document that reviews published literature on a specific topic. Notice I added something to the definition. A literature review can be part of a research paper, typically after the introduction and before the methods section, giving background on the topic, specific literature that has influenced the study, versus the entire review paper that is a more extensive review of literature on a specific topic with specific parameters. It can either be a small part of a paper or the whole paper itself. For example, this one is part of a paper. They typically come after the introduction and before the methods section. It is usually the research that the authors are using to either set up the context of the study that they're doing or to help support the reasoning for the methods that they do in the study themselves. So there are different types of reviews. I think the last count I had was 14 or 15 different types of literature reviews, which gets confusing because one of them is actually called a literature review. But all of them serve a similar broad purpose. It's just that the style of the review has its own purpose and specifics. Think of it like citation styles. There's a reason we have an APA citation style, and there's a reason we have an MLA citation style. They have the same overall function, giving the references inside of a paper, but they're done differently because of different subjects and different needs. Same thing with literature reviews. The discipline or subject field can dictate a specific type of review. For instance, medical reviews are going to serve an entirely different purpose than a history literature review, and thus they'll have different structures. That can determine what type of review the authors are using. Same with the scope of the study. Some are broader in scope and research than others are, because they have a different discipline or focus. They have a different purpose, so their scope is different. The format. How is the information going to be communicated to the audience? There's a specific need for certain styles and different types of literature reviews. Then as we get further into these, you'll see the rigor is more controlled. So we go from one end of the spectrum, where there really isn't any structure or criteria other than the author's choosing, to system and meta-analysis reviews, where it is very structured, very controlled, and everything must be meticulously documented. The five we will be discussing in this video are the scoping, narrative, critical, systematic, and meta-analysis reviews. I'll be showing you what each of these does, how they function, and their critical components. A scoping review does as it sounds. It presents an assessment of the size and scope of available research on a particular topic. A key difference here is that it can include ongoing research. There is no formal documented quality assessment. This is more concerned with showing the overall scope of the published research to date, not the quality of each study. If you'll notice in this example, they give a time span from 2007 to 2016 and are only concerned with the empirical studies on the choice of teaching. Those are the only criteria they are using in their search. So they're going for a very large scoping view of the literature. Literature review can be used in a couple of different ways, so we refer to this style as a narrative review. It can present what publications are out there and what are their attributes. This is typically what we think of when we're doing one that's part of a paper. It will discuss the items of research that inform the study being discussed in the rest of the paper. It's up to the author what they're going to include and exclude. It can be over a large topic, cover a huge range of subjects, or even a wide range of time. What we're doing here is basically identifying certain pieces that are particular to the author's use. As you can see in this example, the authors looked at publications ranging from 2004 to current research because these were the specific items that informed the study design they were accomplishing and reporting in this article. Critical reviews are just that, a critical look at the most significant publications in a narrow topic, evaluative specifically to the contribution of each item to the field at large. No formal quality assessment, this is where we start to get a little bit more restrained and methodical. So it's trying to identify the most significant publications in the field given their parameters. 
They will identify these most critical significant publications and then evaluate each article according to its contribution to the topic. They're looking at what does this study contribute to the field? What does it lack? What are the drawbacks of each study? The key to this one is the term systematic. It's an exhaustive search for relevant items with a very thorough and strict reporting style, meaning everything about the search, the reviewing, the inclusion and exclusion criteria, all must be strictly documented in the article itself. You have to record everything in your research structure, such as the specific databases searched, what search terms were used, what limiters were used, how many unique items were found in each database, why each database was selected. Then you must document what criteria were used to determine which articles were included in the final sample, such as data publication, language, geography of the study, etc. Then the articles must be run through these lenses by title and abstract, and then those that remain must be run through the same lens for full text by different reviewers to finalize the exact number of studies deemed relevant to evaluate. There are different types of systematic reviews, such as Prisma or Cochrane. This is the checklist for a Prisma review. Here you see all the things that you must have in that particular order for an article to be a Prisma review. You must also state the type of systematic review in the title or in the methods section of the article. As you can see here, you must include the Prisma flowchart for your inclusion and exclusion decision-making process in the article. This is a Prisma review I worked on, and you can see here we had to be very detailed in our methods section about the databases searched, the terms we used, how we conducted the selection process. You can also see the Prisma flowchart detailing the process and exclusion numbers. Then we identified the specific articles that were eventually included in the review. Once you get your final articles that have made it into your inclusion, then you look for patterns, reasoning, what's going on, what sort of things are you seeing across the articles that you're reviewing. You also identify the weaknesses of your review structure. For this one, we had a specific time frame we were looking at due to the dates we started the review and the shortness of the COVID pandemic in America at that time. During that time frame, there were not a lot of studies published on things going on in the United States at that time. Therefore, we had to note that in our review. So you not only analyze what you have, but then also identify what's unknown, what's missing, and what could be done for future research. Meta-analysis takes it even further. There's a very close relationship between a systematic review and a meta-analysis review. A meta-analysis is a statistical technique used to combine and analyze results from multiple independent studies on the same topic. Essentially, it's a study of studies that uses statistical methods to synthesize findings and draw broader conclusions. Sometimes people get them confused, but the key with meta-analysis reviews is that the results are going to be graphical and tabular. It's going to have some narrative commentary, but a lot of it is going to be more graphical and tabular in form. A meta-analysis typically starts with the systematic review, which involves identifying, selecting, and evaluating all relevant studies on a given topic, and the data extraction, which takes the relevant data, such as effect sizes, sample sizes, study designs, from the included studies. Then it moves into the meta-analysis with the statistical methods that are then used to combine and analyze the data from the included studies, often using fixed effects or random effects models. The results of a meta-analysis are often presented visually in graphs and charts like a funnel plot or forest plot to display the results of individual studies and the pooled effect. Unless you are doing a specific type of review as an assignment, it can be a little challenging to discern which type of review you should use. Here are some questions to ask yourself. What exactly am I needing? What exactly am I trying to do? And then certain subject fields have specific types of reviews as well. Sometimes specific journals will require a specific type of review, such as a Cochrane or Prisma, which can also help you decide your protocol. For more information on the different types of reviews, I suggest the article, A Topology of Reviews by Grant and Booth. It gives you a great chart with the breakdown of the 14 types of reviews, their characteristics, etc. Thanks for watching, and as always, you can contact the Robert R. Muntz Library or visit our website. We're always happy to help.